Welcome back to part two. Now we're going to talk about setting up a Final Cut project for use on multiple systems on a server or a NAS and uh, I'm your host John Davidson. Okay so let's get started. So we need to import media into a brand new Final Cut Pro 10 project. The very first thing we want to do is create a DMG of this project. Andreas Kiel created a really cool little create disk image app. You click this guy and it'll create a sparse bundle disk image. Now I'm gonna assume that you guys have already kinda seen this or heard about this from other places on how to deal with a sparse bundle but if you haven't a sparse bundle is essentially a disk image that Mac OS will look at as if it's a hard drive. If you're working on a NAS, Final Cut's not natively going to see any events on the NAS, but it will see a mounted sparse bundle disk image. And by sparse bundle, it basically means the size will be tiny and it will only grow as you add media or footage or data to it. And with this tool, you can set a maximum size, which is 500 gigabytes. If you were to just build a regular disk image, it's going to eat up 500 gigs of media on your system even if it's not actually using that so that's not a good idea so this sparse bundle it'll keep it small unless it needs to get bigger uh, let's make one we're gonna call this creative cow action spot uh, create disk image go it's gonna put it in our FCPX DMG projects I showed you guys earlier under our MFI because that's technically the quote network we're working for on this project creating disk image takes just a moment and there you go so we can quit that and now let's see what happened ta-da there's our creative cow action spot looks like a hard drive has 530 gigs available in it isn't that something so now before we get any further you can get this create disk image app from uh, Andreas's website spherico.de slash film tools and here it is right down there create disk image totally totally love this guy for making this so let's open up Final Cut Pro 10 so here we go. Now we have uh, a couple of other drives that are showing up here. Macintosh HD, you've got that. And then Thunder, which is what I call my little promise Pegasus that's not really being used at all for this project. So uh, here's also our Creative Cow Action Spot DMG. So now we need to make a new event. And we're going to call this Action Spot. Now let's get some media in here. We don't want to create optimized media. I've already done that. It's ProRes footage that we're working with, but if you're working with something else, you might want to make optimized media. We don't copy finals, files to Final Cut Events folder, uh, but I do want to import key folders as keyword collections because that's going to help us in just a moment. Uh, everything else I leave unchecked. If I want to do this stuff, I'll do it later. Destinations, you may want to add a destination for a uh, uh, save current frame. Um, playback. You know, we keep background. I like background render. It's awesome to just take your hands off and not have to hit a quick key, but some people seem to not like that. This is all, these are all our settings. So let's go import some media. Go back over here. Remember how I had that keyword collection checked? Watch what happens. It's going to come in as, or a keyword collection. Give it just a moment. There we go. There's our footage from our shoot. That was entirely too easy. I want to give you guys a quick heads up. The team at Magic Feather, we decided to, we couldn't use footage from a show. We didn't want to have to deal with clearing a network. So we grabbed the FS700 and we made our own show just for you guys. So there may be some funny things that you're going to see coming up as we cut the spot in the next chapter. Uh, just so you were warned. So uh, now, okay, so we've got our action spot, we've got this. Now there are a couple of things that we've set up as rules for working together in a shared environment. One, all graphics have .gfx at the end, and I'm going to show you why. File, new smart collection. We're going to call this graphics. Now we need to go in here and edit this. Actually, we're going to say text has .gfx in it. Uh, actually, it doesn't even really need the dot because some people are going to do hyphenations or underscores or whatever. So let's just say GFX. And that's it. Now let's uh, say file, new smart collection, compounds. 
or just comps because that seems cooler and kind of makes me think of After Effects. So let's say media or clip type is let's compound and let's do one more for music. You'll go in here and you'll change this. You're going to say media type is audio only. We don't have any in here yet, but we're getting there. Okay, so now that we've got our comps, footage from shoot, graphics, and music layered out, this is how we want to work to set up our project. Let's go add some graphics. Some of these graphics we made, the special effects we made back in November, but we honestly we just haven't had time to get this to you guys. So let's add this in, action spot. And then let's add Okay, so Jet No Ground, Shocker Wide, Bullet, Roto Jump. These are also part of our graphics. So now we're going to drag those in there. And there we go. There's our uh, Element 3D Jet. Okay, now I got to go tell you guys if you haven't bought Element 3D for After Effects, stop. I'll wait on you. Go get it right now. It is kick. But awesome. Um, we've got this. It, you can get bullet time and just all kinds of really cool, cool things that you're going to want. So these are all our graphics initially that we're going to be using for our spot. We've got our comps, which we haven't created. What? Let's let's make one. We're going to make a new compound clip. We're going to call this action show or action night v1 30 or better yet you know 30 v1 drop frame we're gonna set the time code actually start at one hour 1080i seems to be what everybody works in let's go stereo and go so now we've got our everything in here then we go to comps action night 30 v1 we find that we work with comps better now because rather than projects, we use projects at the very end. And then when we make edits, we work in comps. Comps or compound clips used to originally be used to group elements in a project, but we had multiple projects and it got real messy. And every time we did a version, we duplicated a new project and going between them just kind of was elaborate and now we kind of like the idea you know if we needed to if we needed to do a duplicate of this let's say we had a revision um, I believe you just select it and hit command D so you know we if we we need to make another version we'll just duplicate our compound clip and and leave the original one there as a previous edit seems to be pretty good and it's a much more useful method of uh, quickly editing and not getting bogged down and, and dealing with this. But here we go, we're organized. We've got our comps, we've got our shoot footage, we've got our graphics, we've got our music. Hey, where's our music? Remember that we were talking about in iTunes? Well, here's all your Final Cut Pro sound effects, but also, here's our extreme music. And here is our playlist. And that's why this is awesome. Because the playlist that you make here, let's say we want to go add another song. Um, do 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 extreme music. Let's just say we want some uh, Roadhouse Blues. Let's say we wanted Hiding from Smoking. We drag it in here to this Creative Cow MFI spot. Then there's, you know, Hiding from Smoking. Now we come over to Final Cut. Give it a minute, and it's going to populate over here. Probably when I'm not looking. Sometimes it does take a few minutes, so as soon as I look away, and there we go. So it takes about two minutes for it to come up. We've pretty much set the stage for our first rough cut. So this completes our second chapter of this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit about how we edit, and we're going to actually show you how we do it because it's more fun to watch people do stuff than it is to, uh, you know, hear them talk about it. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. See you in a few.